So you're probably wondering why I hung a door hanger on your door. Well, if you'll hang in there with me just for a few minutes, I'd love to share a story with you that may at first seem possibly strange, even unbelievable, but this story, I believe, includes you. And it's not just my journey, but I think by the time we're done, you may realize it could possibly be your journey too. So let me take you on a journey of what God began to do in my life uh, because the story is actually not about me, it's about you. About 12 months ago, I started to feel so frustrated, even though I had a fantastic church and a beautiful family and basically everything uh, that, that I could ever have wanted. And I started to check in with God and, and ask what I would consider a pretty dangerous question. And I said to God, hey, am I doing everything you want me to do or is there more for me? And uh, in that moment, I had the distinct impression that there was more. And so uh, after that moment, a, a, an incredible thing started to happen. God started to really divinely interrupt my life, my comfort, and uh, begin to take us on a journey. And I'd like to share that journey with you right now. The first thing that God had to do was divinely interrupt my life, which he did by asking me that pretty important question, uncomfortable question. And out of that, I felt like I needed to begin to explore, well, what could this possibly mean? So I decided to go on a road trip and, uh, and just explore different places and think, where could, could God be leading us? I felt like Abraham as a sojourner, kind of going, not knowing where he was going, but going anyway looking for a city whose builder and maker was God, you know. And I, I, I went from Atlanta to Charlotte, North Carolina, to uh, Dallas. And, and I remember distinctly um, coming to a point where I really needed to, to, to hear God because the whole time I was doing this, I was thinking, you know what, God's going to send somebody else and we'll get to enlarge the, the church and the ministry. But that's actually not what happened. So as I'm on this road trip, the thought is slowly dawning on me that God's actually wanting to send me. And uh, uh, I, I think God is amazing when it comes to just tricking us into certain things. And, and so what happened was I was uh, uh, in Dallas and uh, I got an email from a person saying, hey, I don't know where you are or what you're doing, but God wants you to know that he is the potter and you're the clay, and uh, what he said to Jeremiah, he's saying to you, if you'll go down to the potter's house, God's going to speak to you there. And they didn't know I was in Dallas, and that's where T.D. Jakes' church is called the potter's house. So I went to the potter's house on that morning, and uh, he was preaching a message called Out of Service. And uh, God began to speak to me, and he said, James, you're out of service. You're almost retired, you're semi-retired, you've built this church, but really your season is over. And they gave the illustration of a, of a restroom that was out of service and, a, and uh, uh, needing to use that restroom so desperately, uh, but it not being functional. And he said, James, you've got all the pipes, you've got all the water, everything's in place, but you're not available for me anymore. And I actually felt offended. I thought, "What? Well, I've built a church, I'm leading a church. And uh, God began to get a hold of me and he said, James, if you'll, if you'll respond to this, if you'll put your hand up, I'm going to do something far greater than you could ever imagine. But it's going to require a great deal of sacrifice. And I said, okay, God, I'll do it. But the biggest miracle here is my heart. I can put my hand up, but my heart doesn't want to do this. So I went to the front, I put my hand up and said, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Well, I got back to South Africa and I remember distinctly one day just wrestling with my heart. And um, what happened was I grabbed all of uh, the things that were important to me, like all of the birth certificates, all of the passports, uh, the deed to my home, um, my car keys, my cell phone, my watch, and everything that went on the bed, 
I said, God, I give you my watch, which represents my time. God, I give you my, my, my cell phone, which represents all the contacts and people that are in this great church that we sacrifice so much for. And I put it all on the bed. I put my passports and our birth certificates representing our children. And uh, I put my whole life on that bed. And as soon as I had finished doing that, I had an overwhelming sense that God was about to untie me from everything that was in South Africa and take us onto a journey that was going to begin to rock our world in order to get us to the point where we are right now having this conversation with you to say, we've come to Orange County to meet you, to know you. To, to, to build with you, to do something that only God can do, but to do it together. And so uh, the next thing that happened was um, I said to my wife, Jenny, I said, you know what? If, if, if we're going to do this, we better go to the right place. And I called up a friend of mine and I said, you know what? I think God's asking us to do this. And he said, well, if you do this, I'm going to finance it. And so we got on an airplane, he paid for the tickets, and we came to, to, to Los Angeles because one of our criteria was, God, we've got to be comfortable living in our own skin in the new place you're calling us to be a part of. And uh, South Africa is very beautiful and very sunny, and uh, Johannesburg's a lot like uh, uh, Orange County. So we found ourselves here, and uh, uh, our children are swimmers, and they needed a great swim club. We found a great swim club. We found the beautiful weather. We saw these beautiful people. And we realized in our heart, this is the place that God's calling us to. Well, in that moment, we were with a couple that said they were going to support us. And they said, if you plant a church here, we're going to bless you with a quarter of a million dollars to be able to start your church here. How does that sound? Well, we were overwhelmed and blessed because all the criteria and all the things that needed to happen were beginning to just happen. We had found the right place. God had started to provide the money. And I remember before we left Los Angeles to go back to South Africa after our scouting trip, we sat in Nordstrom's Cafe, my wife and I, and uh, even though all these miracles were happening, the magnitude of, God, of what God was asking us to do seemed so significant that we felt like we needed something even bigger. And uh, you may think that's a lack of faith, but when you're asked to do something profound, you need profound confirmation. And so I sat in that restaurant and I looked at my wife and I said, honey, why, what is it that you need? She says, I don't need this to be agreeable. I need this moment to be undeniable. And I said, you're right. I said, I know what we need. And I remembered 17 years ago, a man named Danny Bonilla prophesied us out of the church in order to start the work in Johannesburg, a very detailed and very specific prophecy. And I haven't spoke to him since. And it was a word that's been ringing in our ears ever since we left 17 years ago. And uh, that amazing guy that I haven't spoken to, I said, Jenny, you know what? I want the same prophetic word from the same man that ministered to us 17 years ago. So I got on, I managed to find his website and said, hey, we're in a season of our life where we just feel like we want to put a demand on your prophetic gift. Uh, um, you prophesied over us years ago. Uh, well, sure enough, we get back to South Africa, the phone rings, and it's my wife's mother-in-law saying, hey, Danny Bonilla has been trying to get a hold of you for two weeks, and uh, he wants to talk to you. Here's his number. Will you give him a call? Wow, we just couldn't believe it. Our, our minds were spinning. So we get on the phone, and he begins to tell us, I hope you're sitting down. I've got a strong word for you. Your time in South Africa is over. God is calling you back to the United States to do something uh, that has to do with the grace of God. And your children are going to re be raised there. And we were just overwhelmed. He said, I see all your bags already packed. I see you're moving to another country. And he said, is that right? And we were overwhelmed in tears just saying, yes, God, that is right. And we're willing to do that. As, as incredible as that sound, if you can imagine 15 years of building a church and founding that church and all the relationships with many thousands of people, 
and having to untie yourself from that ministry in a three-month period, only God can do that. So this isn't our story. It's the story of a church. It's a story of a family of believers that then had to be willing to say, Pastor, we're going to let you go. We're going to let you go. And God started to speak to us like out of the story of these little donkeys that was tied up in, uh, in, in, a, in a small community. And Jesus told his disciples, go and untie these donkeys. And if anybody says anything to you, just say this, the master has need of them. And the master had need of our family. And our church allowed us to be untied from what we had built and said, go and we'll love you, we'll support you as you build another work across the world. And the church got on board. My leadership team had to be on board. They got on board. And the incredible things that then began to happen. We had tried to sell our house for 10 years and we're not able to sell it. Now it wasn't even on the market and we get a knock on the door. And a person walks in and says, I'm interested in buying your home. And they bought our home for a record-breaking price the neighborhood has never seen in its history. And the stories just continue to unfold. But the greatest miracle of all is that of a changed heart for me. I don't know how many of you out there have had children. I have four. And I know what it's like to have kids. And when I birthed City Life Church in Johannesburg, we went through a great deal of, of sacrifice and, and uh, personal uh, uh, pain. And uh, I didn't want to go through that again. I had had my children spiritually and naturally. And now God later on in life is saying, James, I want you to have another child. And uh, I didn't want to have another child. But the greatest miracle, and I said this to God in the very beginning, is the miracle of my own heart. I now find myself in a place where I'm in love with Orange County. I'm in love with the people that I meet on the street, people that come into our home. And I'm so excited for this next season of life where we get to build a community of believers that are in love with Jesus, that are in love with each other, and to build in a way that is so great for the community of Orange County. And I want to just say, I want to invite you to be a part of that. I want to meet with you. I want to connect with you. I don't want this to be just about another church. I want this to be about a movement of people that genuinely love each other and love Jesus. God bless you.